these are our five food groups. So just looking over your food diary, we want to have grains, vegetables, fruits, protein and dairy throughout uh, every day over the seven days of the week. So just have a count of how many times did you have all five of our macronutrients in a meal? So list how many times you did that. Then have a, a list of how many times you had four of these food groups in one of your meals. So an example might be for breakfast, you had multigrain bread, so you ticked off the grains. You had steamed spinach, so you ticked off your vegetables. You had uh, bacon and eggs, so you've ticked off your protein, and you had a glass of milk. So that would get you four out of five. The off season is a great time to experiment with different diets and see how they fit. So an example of some different diets, a keto diet, vegetarian, paleo, intermittent fasting, juice cleanse. None of these diets are something we'd recommend for doing longer than a couple of weeks. Uh, obviously the juice cleanse particularly, uh, you might just do that for a couple of days, but it's a good time just to experiment and try things. Um, if you're in a state of good health and your body's, responding well to the program, then it's it's good to play around with, with different um, training methodologies as well as different diets and just see how they fit. Uh, and then down the line, after you've tried different um, diet methodologies, then you may implement a vegetarian day um, because you feel that that does really well for your energy and digestion. And then some other days you might um, involve intermittent fasting, maybe on the day after you game to allow your digestive system longer rest um, because you ate a lot more straight after the game. Um, so these things you can draw on uh, and build your own type of diet that you see fit to your training regime, but you can only do this by experiencing it. And the off season is a great time to play around with things and, and try things out. Our measure to see if your body's responding well and if you're well hydrated. Um, so reading the cues, your, cl your clues from your body. Um, so the colour of your urine, as long as you're not having like vitamin B or vitamin C tablets, um, even beetroot supplements can influence the colour of our urine. Um, so if you're just not following any supplements um, and you're just living a, a normal lifestyle eating regular foods um, you can look at your urine color and, and that can be a great measure to see if you're well hydrated or not and then note down the times where you're commonly dehydrated uh, more often than not we'll be dehydrated first thing in the morning because we haven't had any water overnight um, so that's a really important time to try and get anywhere between 500 mils and a liter in around your breakfast time and that will help you rehydrate uh, and then obviously we want to make sure that we're getting in a couple of liters over the day uh, and that you're changing that depending on the color of your urine and the amount of training that you're doing and of course the temperature and the environment you're living in. Digestive health, looking at our stools um, is a great way to measure how well our body is digesting the foods that we're eating um, and this is a, an image that can show that the different types of, of foods that uh, of poo that um, you, you may see um, and uh, paying attention to uh, what your stool looks like can give you a great measure on whether you're uh, eating foods that are, your body is agreeing with or if you're not. In terms of sports science, um, something that I've loved using on myself as well as with athletes that I work with on an individual level, and that is a heart rate variability, which is the device there on the left. That's a core sense where it just goes over the fingertip um, like so, so you just chuck it on the finger. Two minutes in the morning gives you a morning readiness score uh, and heart rate variability is just the time between our heartbeats. So the variable differences in the time between our heartbeats and someone with a higher heart rate variability is in a state of good health and will be able to um, deal with lots of stress and deal with that stress really well. Where someone with a low heart rate variability 
may be sick um, or they may be um, taking on a disease, um, they're going to show a low sign of heart rate variability. 